God bless you guys on Facebook. We are here for our, our Thursday uh, Bible study here at Project Life, and we are uh, going to be studying Romans chapter 10, and we're going to start in verse 6. So let's go ahead and get started. God bless you guys. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you, Lord, that it is alive, and Lord, it is is causing us to live that prosperous Christian life. And Lord, we just ask that, Lord, our hearts are open to you, our eyes are open to your word, and I pray you'd reveal it to us today in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. amen. Well, this is what it says. Listen to this. It says, but the righteousness of faith speaks. Now, what does that mean? That means that faith speaks. And somebody says, well, I got faith. But do you have faith that speaks? You know, there's a lot of times people, they, in my life, I know in my life, I've had times where I wanted God to do something for me in my life, and I just prayed about it, and then I just thought in my mind, this is going to happen, this is going to happen. I believe in you, Lord. I'm trusting you, Lord. And, you know, I found out that I was falling short in doing that because, see, faith, speaks. If you're not speaking a promise or the word of God over your life, faith is not activated in your life. And, and we're going to see that as we go on. And by the way, we're going to see that we're actually born again or saved by faith. It says, but the righteousness of faith speaks in this way. It says, don't say in your heart who is ascended to heaven, uh, that is to bring Christ down from above, or who is a descended into the abyss or hell that is to bring Christ up from the dead. But it says, but what does it say? The word says is near you. It's near you. What's near you? The word is near you in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith, which we preach. The word of faith is near you. In other words, right now, you're hearing this word of faith. The Bible says faith comes by hearing. We'll see that in a little bit. This word, when I speak it out to you, that what happens is, is that faith starts to rise up inside of you. The word is near you, and it should be where? In your mouth and in your heart. Now, this is the way I like to look at it. And I, I, I remember when I first started studying this and seeing it working in my life, this is what, what I would see in my mind, in my mind's eye. That when I put the word of promise, the word of God in my mouth, it drops into my heart. If I don't put it in my mouth, it won't be in my heart. Even though I hear it with my ears, faith, the righteousness of faith, always speaks. So if I'm going to have anything to happen in my life, that God's involved in it, I'm going to have to be speaking some things. I was talking to Pete. I guess that's what I call you over there, Pete. I was talking to him earlier about how, you know, we give thanks to the Lord. I want to thank you, Lord, even in troubles. The Bible says, yea, though we go through the valley of the shadow of death, the word through is a key word going through it. Well, while we're in there, we shouldn't be moaning and groaning. We should be praising the Lord, lifting our hands and saying, Lord, I want to thank you that you are the one who delivers me and sets me free. You're the one who sustains me and keeps me. See, I'm using the words of faith. They're in my mouth and in my heart. And those words have been deposited in my heart over years of time. Now, there's promises on healing. There's promises on prosperity. There's promises on protection. And you say, well, when should I start confessing those promises? When I need protection or when I need healing? No. You should be making those confessions of those promises over your life way before any troubles come. Because when the trouble comes, it's going to be a whole lot harder to make those confessions than it is and, and let them drop into your heart. So over the time, if you're saying these words of promise in your life, if you're speaking them out of your mouth now when there's no problem, then it drops into your heart and <laughs> fills your heart with those words. And then when trouble comes, how many of you know when trials and temptations come, it's like putting pressure on it and something's going to pop out. Whatever, Whenever a person goes through trials and temptations, 
Whatever's in their heart is going to come out that little old mouth. And if it's doubt and unbelief, if it's what you saw on TV or how your mom and daddy believed or whatever the case may be, or if it's the word of God that you deposit in your heart, it's going to spew out your mouth. Once the pressure is on, that's what's going to come out and what you're going to say. And it says, but what does it say? The word is near you in your mouth and in your heart. That is the word of faith which you preach. Listen to this. That if you'll confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God's raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Somebody says, well, how can I get saved? You know, I remember whenever I was a little Baptist boy, I'd get convicted of my sin and I would go down to the altar and I would cry big alligator tears, you know, and I would just cry, Lord, forgive me of my sin. Oh, please forgive me of my sin. Anybody else done that besides me? Yeah. And you get me in, I'm praying, go, I'm crying out, God, please forgive me of my sin. Well, little did I know at the time, because nobody taught me any different, that he had already forgiven me of all my sin through the sacrifice of Jesus and the blood shed from Jesus' body was the forgiveness of my sin. That's what it says in Ephesians chapter 1, verse 7. It says that, that his blood is the total forgiveness of all our sins. So it was already done, so I was praying the wrong prayer. And then I'd pray other prayers. You know, I'd rededicate my life. Well, you can't rededicate something that has never been dedicated. But then one day I went and down to the altar. I did the same old religious stuff, walked out the building. My, my sister-in-law asked me, don't you just feel better? And I said, no, I actually feel worse than I did when I came in here. And then I went off by myself. I needed a Savior. I knew I needed somebody to help me. And I walked by myself, and I lifted up my eyes to God, and I said, Jesus, if you're real, I want you to come into my heart. I want you to come into my life. I want you to help me. I need your help. And that moment, he came into my heart. And then I went home, and the first thing I did is I had to tell somebody. So the first thing I did was I saw my mother, and I said, Mama, guess what? She said, what? I said, I asked Jesus in my heart tonight. He's my Lord and Savior. What did I just do? I just confessed with my mouth that Jesus is my Lord. And I believed in my heart that God's raised him from the dead. And therefore, what? I am saved. Salvation comes through confessing Jesus as Lord with your mouth and believing in your heart that God's raised him from the dead. You know, salvation is not going to come if you don't believe Jesus is sitting on the right hand side of God on that throne. Jesus has been raised from the dead. I believe he's alive. I believe he's not only alive, but he's alive in me. And he made me a new person inside of my heart because I called out upon him and I confessed him as my Lord and Savior. So if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God's raised him from the dead, you'll be saved. Now, this word saved in the original Greek is a word that is the definition of it is being made whole, being saved, being healed, prosperity, all the what is an effect to bring us from death to life, from darkness to light, from the way we live to the way God has designed us and wants us to have and live. And so therefore, everything in this scripture, the same way you receive Jesus and make him Lord of your life and become a new creation in him, is the same way you receive the finances you need, the same way you receive your healing that you need. Let's say, let's just take healing, for example. All of a sudden, I go to the doctor. He looks at me, examines me, and he diagnoses me with a disease. Well, the doctor is only telling me what he sees. So I go outside, and I either say this. I either say this when I go outside of that room. I say to my wife or my loved ones or my friend or whoever may be the closest, well, they diagnosed me with an incurable disease, and I'm going to die. That just happened with somebody before. And, and you get up and you think, or if you are a person that's filled your heart by confessing healing over your life when you were well, and it's deposited in your heart, then what's going to happen is you're going to come out of that room, and you're going to look at your wife or your loved one or your friend, and they're going to say, what did he say? And they're going to say, well, he diagnosed me with this, but, I love the buts in the Bible, but 
God is my healer. And this disease has no place in my life. Sickness and disease has to flee me now in Jesus' name. I speak under this disease. It has a name. And I call that name of that disease out. I said, you have to bow your knee to Jesus Christ because he <coughs> is my Lord. You see what's different coming out of my mouth? That I am saved the same way from sickness and disease, the same way I'm saved from eternal death and hell. By confessing Jesus as Lord over my life. Confessing his word over my life. And let me tell you again, it's better to get this word deposited in your heart before, before you come to the times of trouble. Because when you come to the times of trouble, it's going to be pressure put on you. And again, what's in your heart is going to spew out your mouth. And it goes on to say, it says, for, it says here, for with the heart, man believes unto righteousness. Now, what, what is righteousness in this case? What is righteousness for healing? Health. What is righteousness for salvation from your sins? Eternal life. What is righteousness for your finances? Having all your needs met and having more than enough to be able to give. What is right? So, therefore, it says, if you confess, it says, you believe with your heart, to righteousness or to whatever that promise is that it will be a manifest promise in your life with the mouth, with the heart man believes unto righteousness listen to this and with the tongue or with the mouth it is made unto salvation so in other words i believe in my heart and then i confess with my mouth believing in my heart is declare is, is declaring is the is the righteousness of what that promise is for that promise to come to pass in my life confessing with my mouth activates that promise and causes it to manifest itself in my everyday life so whatever you're saying is coming out of your heart somebody you know people say things and they say oh, i'm just joking well maybe not maybe you're not joking maybe this is the way you're dealing with this issue you know a lot of people do that they'll get up there and they'll they'll say something and laugh about it and they because they can't figure out how to overcome it, they just want to laugh it off. Well, let me tell you something. Whatever comes out of your mouth is going to be your future. I can promise you that with all of my heart. I can promise you that. It says, for with the heart man believes unto righteousness, with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. For the scripture says, whoever believes on him will not be put to shame. Whoever believes on Jesus and his promise will not be put to shame. Now, I'm going to let you know, I have never been put to shame when I believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. Psalm 25 talks about that. It talks about, Lord, let me not be ashamed. Let not your promises, let your promises be real in my life. In verse 12, it says, for there is no distinction between a Jew or a Greek. Or I'm going to add a little bit to that neither black or white or fat or skinny or woman or man. There's no distinction between them. The same Lord overall is rich unto all who call upon his name. Doesn't matter who you are, no matter whether you're rich or poor, no matter whether you're white or black, no matter whether you're man or woman, no matter whether you're Jew or Greek, the same Lord over is overall and he's rich to all who call upon his name. Uh, listen, if, if that was, if somebody says, that's just too simple. No, it ain't too simple. I remember that night, Jesus, I need you. Jesus, I need you. Today, I can say the same thing that with he, Lord, I, Jesus, I need your healing power in my life. And Lord, I declare you're my healer. You're the one who came and you took those stripes upon your back for my healing. Your healing power is mine, and I thank you for it. And I reach out now in Jesus' name, and I possess it with my words and with my heart. It says, verse 13, it says, So whoever calls on the name of the Lord shall or will be saved. I, let's read it this way. For whoever calls on the name of the Lord will have eternal life. For whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be healed. For whoever calls on the name of the Lord will have their finances 
met and, and their needs met according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And whoever calls on the Lord will have their relationship between whoever they're having conflict with resolved. Whoever calls on the name. Listen, the reason that we don't have God active in our life is because we ain't calling on him enough. We need to call on him more in everything, in every circumstance, every situation. And then verse 14 says, it says, well, how shall they call on him of whom they've not believed? And how shall they believe on him of whom they've not heard? And how shall they hear without a preacher? That's what I'm here for. And how shall they preach unless they're sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the gospel of peace, who brings glad tidings of good things. That's what I've been doing today. It says, but they have not obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah says, who? Lord, who has believed our report? So faith comes by hearing. And hopefully you're getting faith today. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So therefore, if we are going to live by faith, if we're going to have faith active in our life, we're going to have to do what it says in verse 6. We're going to have to say, the righteousness of my faith will speak. So I want you to start taking the word of prom the promise of the word of God, the word of promise, and I want you to start putting it in your mouth. I want you to start speaking it over your life and over the life of your family and over the life of your loved ones. And you let God do the work in them and in you. Well, Lord, we thank you for this time together and for this teaching. And Lord, we ask you to make it a part of our hearts. Let it be written upon our hearts. And Lord, that we'll be able to have it there in times of need. And Lord, we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, those on Facebook, love, like, and share it. We appreciate you and thank you for being with us. And God bless every one of you. We'll see you next time. God bless you.